Um, so if God is all-knowing, yes. why do you need to pray five times a day? And why do you need to pray in the direction of Mecca? Okay, so I don't see the correlation between the two. Look, if we pray five times a day or we pray towards the direction of, of Mecca, how does that correlate with the attributes of God? I'm, I'm missing the link between the two questions. Between uh, the question, basically, and the points. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'm saying if God's all-knowing, why, why do you need to pray in the direction of Mecca? He, he doesn't, you know, he knows what you're thinking or doing or saying, sure. no matter what direction you're Yeah, so, so, so we pray uh, because God commands us to pray as an act of worship first, yeah. meaning it's a form of submission. It's not relation to the, uh, the yeah. knowledge of God, number one. Number two, it is because it's good for us. So it does not benefit God that we pray. Allah says in the yeah. Quran, in Allah, Allah is free from you. He doesn't need you. He's independent of anything, everything and anyone. But, why but we pray God for... want you to pray five times a day? It seems like quite a lot. Like, it seems, you know, but, it seems like kind of a yeah. like greater God that they would ask someone. Of but why do we pray is the question. That's what I was trying to tell you. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah. I was trying to tell you prayer is for us. So if prayer is beneficial for us, then we will do it five times a day. Yeah. You're thinking of it as it is a benefit for God, which is not benefiting God, it's benefiting us. Yeah. Prayer, of course, first is an obedience of God, which gives yeah. us, us, we have a soul. We don't just have the bodies, right? I have yeah. a body, I have a body. You can feed the body food, but the soul also requires nourishment. And that's why a lot of people have a lot of money, but they are the most miserable people on earth. Yeah. Richest people commit suicide all the time because materialistic things do not give you fulfillment internally. We say the prayer is a yeah. connection between us and God. So first, it gives us this fulfillment, number yeah. one. Number two, it reminds us of God. So when we're living our lives, we get reminders. We do not commit evil deeds yeah. because this life is a test. So it helps us stay connected to the Creator and stay connected to purity yeah. and far away from evil deeds and sins and actions, right? Yeah. So all, and there's many, many, of course, other things as well. It gives us reliefness from the, the all of the tiredness that we have in life. We're just focusing between us and God. The conversation yeah. that you have with the most beloved to you, which is the Creator, right? So there's many things that we do for ourselves. So these prayers, we don't look at them as a burden. So we look at them as a... Yes. And so if one prays... And obedience to God, of course. If you pray yes. six times a day, does that bring you closer to, to God than praying five times a day, would you say? But this, is, but this is the thing, is is where do you, What is prayer? Is what uh, I was telling you. It's a connection I between... I don't pray, so you tell me. Sure. So a prayer is a connection between you and God. Right. And if God is the one who commands you how to pray, then prayer yeah. has to be done in the way that He likes. Yeah. Like if you buy a gift for your friend, yeah. you buy a gift that He likes or you the gift that you like? Yeah, I guess a, a gift that He likes. Yes, yeah, so yeah. if we're going to pray to the Creator, we have to play to the Creator the way that He likes, yeah. the way that He commands us because it's a form of submission, not the way that we determine. Mm -hmm. We start innovating, okay, one guy says, I'm going to you know, do this and this is a prayer, you know? We yeah. say, okay, then everyone will do his own thing and we we'll refer to it as a prayer. Yeah. But the one who determines how he would like you pray to him is the one who asks you to pray to him yeah. to begin with, which is the Creator. Interesting. Um, and in terms of other questions, so um, obviously Islam is a very interesting religion. Okay. I understand the difference between that and Christianity is believe Jesus uh, isn't the son of God, but a prophet in the same way as Muhammad. Um, but surely uh, the Quran was written a long time after the Bible, a long okay. time after sort of Jesus was around. So sure. why should I believe the Quran more than I believe the Bible? Yeah, will we say it's not what is written first, therefore it's true? Like I can bring the oldest book in human history and it can contain mistakes. If it has one yeah. plus one equals three, it doesn't mean it's true, right? Yeah. So truth is not determined by how ancient the book is, right? Yeah. And that's why the Christians believe in the Torah that yeah. came before them, right? And you'll have you'll have uh, Hindus, yeah, and you'll have Hindus claiming they're before that, yeah. and everyone will claim we're before that. And you look at Noah. Some people will say we're Noah hides. We follow Noah, and that was before that. Yeah. It's not about who is before who. It's about the beliefs that you have. Can you determine? Can you give us evidences that what you believe is truly from God or not? So we yeah. say we look at every scripture, yeah, uh, objectively, and we study it, and we look at and the evidence. Study the Book of Mormon, for example. Yeah. Why not? Really? Yeah. So when you look at Joseph Smith, you find Joseph Smith committing many false predictions of the future prophecies. Yeah. And the same book that he believes in, which is the Bible, says that if anyone claims something will happen in the future and it doesn't happen, yeah. and he claims it in the name of God, then he's a false prophet. Really? So he, yeah, so he falsifies his own beliefs, right? Yeah. He give you many more. Uh, he said that America will end in this time, it will be defeated yeah. in this time, and many, many false prophecies that he made, right? So yes, of course, I investigate what the Book of Mormon says, as I yeah. do with the Bhagavad Gita, as I do with the Torah and the Talmud, as I do with any other scripture in the Bible, right? Yeah. Uh, all the New Testament. So we cannot just be in a bubble and say, oh, this is the truth. Yeah. Like I would reject, the, the, I have a reason for each religion. If I say I don't accept this religion, I'll give you a common like, Do you know about 
or the Hindu gods like Ganesh and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, you have you have the story of Ganesh, how Ganesh actually has, actually became God, yeah. which is that these things are not reasonable. You have the father of, of this godfather saying to God the son, protect your mother, stay on the door, do this, protect her. Yeah. Then he doesn't, he comes back, he's not there, so he chops his, the head of his own son. And he says, what did I do? He finds an elephant, he chops his head, he puts it on his son. This is essentially, I mean, in a very summarized way, the story, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, uh, therefore you got a god, like, or you got monkey armies fighting with, e with each other. Yeah. Or you got, like, the earth is on a, you know... Yeah, all crazy, but then Prophet Muhammad riding a horse to heaven. Oh, that's totally, that's like... That, that is funny. Where did you bring that belief from? We don't uh, believe that. Very good question. Uh, you know, from, uh, I'll tell white you. man went to a Christian, you know, it's something that I've heard of. That's it. I don't know yeah, anything more. Hearsay, like, yeah, social exactly. media, yeah, yeah. hearsay, media, people, but that's not the case. We don't believe in that. Really? We believe uh, the Prophet, a.s. went up, he did not go up on a horse. We believe, really? believe in a specific creation of God called the Buraq. It yeah. is not a horse, it is not a donkey, it is not one of the creations that we know. It yeah. is, so can God create a vehicle in which the Prophet can use to ascend up? Yeah. Is that a logical possibility? Uh, well, God can if there is a creation. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so there is no flying horse of these fairy tales of stories of little daughters, you know, has like a, a horse with a horn with two wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't believe it. In fact, there is a funny thing. There is a story of the Prophet Salam and what, and wife and then yeah. um, playing with a do with dolls or something like that or she had a doll and then he said uh, what is this she said I heard that Solomon at the time of Solomon there was horses with wings that used to fly so the Prophet laughed yeah. laughed at the idea so that idea that you're talking about the Prophet laughed at you know <laughs> this is not the belief that we really? hold as, as Muslim yes I'm telling you one thing that I like about Islam that I don't like about Christianity is that the Bible has kind of been translated and translated and we don't really know what it means yes. but then the Quran people learn it off by heart and so it never changes. But then someone pointed out, well, actually, we've got two kinds of Islam, Shia and... Uh, Sunni, 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 yeah, Sunni, yeah. Sunni. Um, And so which one are you and why... Why? If, if, if everyone knows the Quran, you know, word for word, how yes. can there be two different... Okay, okay. So first, um, I'm a Muslim. I don't yeah. identify myself as this or that. I identify uh, I bet myself... you do, though. I bet, come on. Uh, I'll tell you why I identify myself as a Muslim. Because the yeah. Quran that we're all supposed to follow says to call yourself a Muslim. The yeah. Prophet, he said, name yourself Muslim. Says Allah named you in the Quran. Yeah. And Allah said, I named you Muslim. So if Allah yeah. names Muslim me... Muslim means follower, right? Yeah. A submitter. The one who submits to God. Yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is this. If my parents name me Muhammad and I call myself Muhammad, if God, the Almighty, names me something, I'm not going to go with people's names over it, right? Yeah. I'm going to go with the God Almighty's name over anyone else's naming me. That's yeah. the first thing I will say. Second thing about the idea of Sunni, it's not like people imagine 50-50. this. No. She has a, like 10% of Muslims or less. Yeah. Okay, that's number one. Number two, uh, why, where does the difference come from? Coming from? Yeah. Shias and Sunnis both believe in the same Quran. Yeah. Both believe in the same Prophet. Both believe in the same God. I'm surprised that you look, but the difference comes from a historical event yeah. after the death of the Prophet yeah. So it's a political Maybe thing. Successor, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's a political thing that happened after the death of the Prophet Who should have been the successor? Should it have been Abu Bakr? Should it have been yeah. Omar? Or should it have been Ali? And then later on, the people who aligned themselves to the Ali ibn Abi Talib said that we call ourselves Shia to Ali means a group of Ali. Shia means group. Yeah. Group of Ali. And then there was a new religion that was brought later on. They started bringing beliefs. Oh, Ali is actually uh, like God. Even so you're Sunni then, right? Sorry? So you're Sunni. I'm, I'm telling you history now. Okay, if you fine. if you if you can find me, for example, at the time of the Prophet, anyone who said that Ali knew the unseen or that Ali is gonna come back to life, none of these things will be there. If you look at history, yeah. trace it historically, you'll find out that it happened later on yeah. where these beliefs started to develop. Yeah. So right now I'm speaking of Objectively, that this is the case. Of course, a Shia would say, no, no, that's not the case. But you can ask, hey, yeah. can you produce for me a carbon dated manuscript of beliefs or evidences that traces back that these people believe the things that you're saying? Yeah. He's not going to be able to do that. And therefore, that's objective history. Now, what does Sunni mean? Sunni, it comes from the word Sunnah, which is tradition. I need to follow the tradition of the Prophet. If you go to a Shia and say to him, should we follow the tradition of the Prophet? You know what he's going to say? What's that? He's going to say yes. So, by extension, he's, got, he's a Sunni in that way. Sunni just means to follow the tradition of the Prophet. Okay, now, in the end, call yourself potato, call yourself Sunni, call yourself Shia. Yeah. The Quran is the criteria because we all believe in it. Yeah. And the Quran teaches that, uh, for example, the companion.
companions of the Prophet, you should follow them. Yeah. You'll have Shi'as cursing them. We have the Quran, for example, saying that we should call upon Allah alone. You should worship Allah alone and call upon Him alone. You okay. find Shi'a calling upon Ali and other dead people. Yeah. Right? So, when you use the criteria, which is the Quran, Allah says if you disagree over anything, return it to the Quran. If we use the Quran and we find the people doing anything, whether you call yourself Sunni, Shi'a, Potato, whatever you want to call yourself, yeah. if you're not doing what the Quran is saying and what the Prophet taught, then you are wrong in that thing. Yeah. Right? The, the name is not going to save you, right? Just by calling yourself something. That does not mean now okay. you're upon the correct belief. And do you think some Christians will go to heaven or only, only Muslims? Well, it depends what you mean by Christian. Because throughout history, we yeah, say, for example... Similar, actually, if you look at both. Yeah. We believe, for example, if you're living at the time... Living out the time with Jesus and follow yeah. Jesus, then that's not what a Muslim is. Uh, sorry, that's not what a Christian is. That's a Muslim. Yeah. We believe Mo Jesus was Muslim, prophet, meaning he submitted to the will of the Creator. Yeah. Th therefore, whoever followed him was also a Muslim. So the people who followed Jesus at his life yeah. before Allah sent Prophet Muhammad and followed the teachings of Jesus and died upon that, these people go to paradise. Yeah. You can call them Christians today. Many people will call them Christians. Now, after Prophet Muhammad, and I'm answering your question now, yeah. after Prophet Muhammad, whoever hears the message of Islam, yeah. now this is the, the condition, whoever hears the message of Islam and yeah. rejects the message of Islam and dies upon rejecting it will go to hellfire. Who doesn't hear the message and he called himself Christian, but he didn't hear the message of Islam, he didn't hear the evidences for for his truth yeah. has a different test on the day of judgment. Yeah. The criteria is if you hear the truth, the evidence yeah. says, present it to you, and then you reject it and you die upon rejecting it, then you're choosing hellfire because you see the evidences. And innately you know it's the truth because it will make sense. You will see the evidences for it. Well, I don't speak Arabic and apparently if you do speak Arabic, the, the Quran is the most beautiful thing and, and it's so irrefutable that it, it could not possibly be the truth. And so I don't believe God, Allah has, has truly shown me sure. The way because I was born into sure. a white sure. atheist family, right? Can I surprise you? Now? And I've got, you know, I've got two law degrees. I'm an intelligent person, I think, okay. and I don't accept it because I don't. i have not sort of, okay. you know. Okay, can I? Can, so maybe I'm going to hellfire. No, no, no. Can I surprise you now? I'll surprise me. I'll surprise you by telling you that over eighty percent of Muslims don't speak Arabic. So really? So yeah. So when you you say I don't speak Arabic, you are a reflection of the overwhelming majority of Muslims. Really? Of course, the biggest populations of Muslims: Indonesia, Malaysia, Pakistan. Pakistan, etc. Yeah. These are the biggest population in the world. You can Google it now as a stat. Uh, yeah. the, the country, the countries that speak, because a lot of people think it's an Arab thing, yeah. but they are unaware. That's why I said I will surprise you. Yeah. That over 80 percent of us is Dura. But you can still appreciate its beauty. Have you have you ever put a headphone and listened to the Quran? Uh, I've listened. Uh, I, I officially I have not. So okay, no, so this I, is, I, 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 okay. I live near a mosque. I hear no it. No problem. So I, I will advise you do just bring a headphone, yeah. put, it, put it on your ears, and listen to the Quran. Yeah. And you will say yourself <clears throat> that it has a spiritual effect on you. Mm. And you don't need to speak Arabic to have that. That's why everyone listens to the Quran. Like if you Google just Quran on YouTube, you see millions of views. Yeah. These are not necessarily people who speak the Arabic language. These are people who understand and appreciate the effect of the Quran because you believe it's God's yeah. words will have an effect on your soul either way. Okay. But the thing is, you're not commanded to believe that, uh, to understand the Arabic language to be a Muslim yeah. for you to be a Muslim all you need to do is to understand the foundational beliefs and I can explain it to you in English you can read the translation you oh, can meet I've someone many, you know, lots of reasons. Yeah, if I turned yeah. up a mosque and said you know as a white man said I want to be a Muslim yes. would I be accepted you think, or you'll do you think you will find suspicion? you will find white men there that are Muslim so really? <laughs> yes but I don't know if I get, how many people I can tell you that become Muslim yeah. today and yesterday uh, who are from French backgrounds all of these backgrounds you, yeah. it, we don't have Islam is not white or black or orange. It doesn't matter what your color is. It's the most diverse religion know, in the planet. Yeah, I get that. But yes. well, yeah, apart from white people, probably. But maybe you say no, 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 no. I, I disagree. Okay, let's talk about the UK. Yeah. If you want to talk about the British people, yeah. uh, for example, you look at the last census that happened in the UK. Yeah. The the Muslims they are from uh, 4.6 to I believe yeah. 6. Point something, right? If I'm uh, if I'm correct, right? So, but there's an increase, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people accepting Islam yeah. in the UK and Wales. Right? Yeah. From 4.9 to 6.4, now I remember. Yeah. From 4.9 to 6.4. I, I would argue that's from immigration rather than a growing... No, 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 no. Pew Research conducted a study to do with conversion rate. Right. And Islam is at the top. It's not 
it's not about a birth rate. That's, that's a yeah. common, a common, you know, low blow that you find in the media. That's, a, that's not the case. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to do a low blow. No, I'm not you. Right? No, yeah, not yeah, you. Yeah, I'm not saying you. I'm saying the people yeah, yeah, do that. They spread this misinformation yeah, yeah, yeah. for that reason. But the reality is, yeah. according to Peer Research Institute, as well as many other uh, organizations, that, yeah. that the more when you look at conversion or acceptance rate, yeah. it is uh, number one. Yeah. Even the Daily Mail had this study that majority yeah. of the people who accept Islam three of, of every four is women. Because yeah. a lot of women they hear bad information. Oh, women are oppressed. All of this nonsense. Yeah. And then they do research. I don't really personally like the whole like hijab thing. But this is the thing. Are, but this is the thing. With all the respect to you as well, I'm not yeah, trying yeah, to be uh, uh, yeah, to be disrespectful. Yeah. It's not about what I like and what you like. It's about what the Creator commands. Yeah. Allah knows the, na the nature of the man and knows what we are attracted to physically yeah. in a woman, and knows what is the consequences of that attraction yeah. that happens in society. I might not like something, but I know the wisdom behind it okay. within the society and how it reflects uh, positively as a whole on a society, right? But the thing is, you can become yeah. Muslim right now if you want it, but if you believe it, yeah. in the teachings of Islam is the thing, right? We're not trying to recruit people here. It's irrelevant. People should accept because they yeah. want to, right? And, and so, am I allowed to ask a few quick five questions? About yeah, 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 go ahead. So what, what, what are you doing here then? What's your purpose? Our purpose here is to deliver the message. So oh. Allah commands us in the Quran that everyone has a right yeah. to know the truth. You have a right to know the truth yeah. and then to make a decision of whether you want to accept the truth or not. Yeah. Allah says in chapter 2 verse 256, there's yeah. no compulsion acceptance of religion. All right, next question. If, if people have been cremated, because obviously Muslims are generally buried in the direction of Mecca, I believe? Or, no, no, not in not not the okay. direction. But yeah. within three days of, of death, generally? No, generally the corpus is going to rot. Of course, you have to bury it as soon as possible. Isn't and it? so if people have been cremated, could they get to heaven, do you think, or not? Well, well you being cremated or not is not uh, a reason whether you'll be in hellfire or heaven. So it's I just, thought, uh, but the action... Come yeah, no, no, no. The action, this is, a, I'll tell you an interesting story yeah, about yeah, it. The thing is, first, we say Allah is able to do everything, right? And yeah. we say that this is a sin to increment the people, but that doesn't mean that the person will end up in fire because of it, because yeah. the person who increments him is not him, yeah. right? Yeah. Allah is able to bring you, whether you're cremated, thrown in the sea, yeah. uh, thrown in the ocean, whatever is happening to you. The one who created you the first time, as Allah says in the Quran, is able to bring you back. Okay. Okay. All right, next question. Uh, so going a slightly different, different that's vibe right, that's here. Right, that's right. If I'm taking up too much of your time. No, 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 go ahead. No, no, it's okay, no problem. Why would God create foreskins only for him to command to get rid of them? Well, uh, we I, do... I don't have one. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. There's many of the things that the God commands, we do them as an act of worship, as submission to him. For instance, the number of the prayers. Why are they five, not six, not seven, not eight, not, not ten? You can ask these questions, but we do them out of submission. Now, the question is, can God just give you, and this is interesting to think about now, can yeah. God give you the foreskin as a ten? that whether you will submit to his command not knowing the reason behind doing it or not. He can. Can he create the first skin to fulfill a specific purpose and then command you to do to remove it? Yes. Quran say to remove it? The hadith, is it, is the, it the teachings of the prophets. No, no, the teachings of the prophets say it, yes. So You're talking about circumcision, right? Circumcision, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The prophet does, but not only Islam. Uh, it's a tradition of Abraham. I know it is. And it actually says it's an eternal tradition. Well, I, I have a question. Is it in the Quran? To get, uh, we don't just believe in the Quran. We believe in the Quran and the, the teachings of the prophet. Allah says in the Quran, and the Prophet expla explains the Quran. So you only put some of his teachings in the Quran? No, there is no teachings of the Prophet in the Quran at all. The Quran is God's words. We don't mix God's words with any human. It's unlike so any religion. Muhammad's teachings aren't in there? No, it's called the Hadith. The Hadith is the narrations of the Prophet And then we have a historical process of authentic authenticating it. Yeah. If it's an authentically uh, attributed statement to the Prophet, then it is binding because the Quran, he brought it, and Allah told you in the Quran, that he yeah. speaks revelation not of his own, and that for Follow the Prophet and whatever he tells you to do, do, and whatever he tells you not to do, do not do. Because yeah. uh, the Quran, if it has details of everything, yeah. it will be this massive and no one will read it. Yeah. But the Quran is a comp uh, composed kind of text in which he expounded to through the life of the Prophet of application. Yeah. How do you actually apply in reality? The Prophet is the example of how to do it. Yeah, interesting. All right, well, that's very good. I, I'm out of questions, and I think <laughs> you clearly know your stuff, so I'm very impressed. <laughs> okay. I was hoping to beat you on a few points, but I thought you were very good. Okay, I uh, appreciate it. So, yeah, I live all right. Area yeah, right and there. there's always people doing uh, stalls there and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So the thing is, I invite you to Islam. If it makes sense to you, if you believe in one creator, whether you worship, and yeah. it makes sense that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger, I invite you to Islam. In the end, it's your decision and choice whether you want to accept or not. Yeah, well, I'm not quite converted, but I thought you had some very good answers to my question. So no problem. What's me? Remind me your name? Muhammad. Of course. Nice talking to you. <laughs> <All> right, <thank laughs> no you problem. Much. Appreciate it. Thank you.